Moms never have it easy. Consider the giraffe. Sure, you're the tallest animal in the world. And yes, you can make lions duck and cover. But having babies is no picnic. The mother carries around hers for 15 months. At birth, the baby can weigh up to 55 kilograms. Its arrival into the world is both unique and a little rude. A two meter plunge, straight to the ground. It doesn't quite have its racing legs yet, but within a few hours, it can follow after mother. It will be a year or more before it can survive on its own. Two meters tall and slow makes it a tempting target for lions. It's just not easy being big. Our next weird creature is the envy of pregnant women everywhere. The giant seahorse is neither gigantic nor a horse. Instead, it's a 30 centimeter long fish that lives in the Pacific Ocean. But its name isn't nearly as mixed up as the way it reproduces. It starts off simple. Boy meets girl, a brief courtship, tails intertwine. The newly minted couple will stay together throughout the breeding season. About that breeding, the female makes the eggs, but instead of growing them inside her or depositing them on the ocean floor like most fish, she deposits them in the guy. A specialized pouch in his belly opens up to receive the eggs. She floats away. He fertilizes the eggs and takes over the heavy-duty work of incubating their offspring over the next few weeks. Why does the male eat for several hundred? Reproduction is energy intensive. By sharing the baby burden, it gives the female a chance to invest her energy in laying the next round of eggs. More eggs means more chances some offspring will survive. The father finds out the hard way when the young are ready to emerge. He experiences a set of intense contractions. No Lamaze glasses for this guy. He just suffers through it and up to 400 children wriggle free and swim away. And he looks for his mate to start the painful process over again. That's just mixed up. In Southern Australia lives the shingleback skink. A weird name for a weird creature. For starters, its fatty tail looks like a second head, a confusing sight for some predators. Get too close and the real head springs into action. But the skink is more of a lover than a fighter, especially now that it's breeding season. Shingleback skinks give birth to live young. That's rare among reptiles. The babies are huge relative to her size. And there's usually more than one. They're so well developed, they are born ready to survive on their own. It's sort of like giving birth to teenagers without the benefit of painkillers. Males seem particularly attracted to females with long torsos, more room to grow babies. And if a male clicks with the right lizard lady, he may return to her every breeding season for the rest of his life, which can last another 20 years or so. Now there's a keeper.
swarm of thousands made up of cactus bees and soon to be mothers. Unlike their more famous cousins, the honeybee, cactus bees are solitary. Each female digs a nest about 30 centimeters deep in the ground. Mating occurred nearly a year ago. The females have been waiting for the right signal to lay their eggs ever since. And the race is on. It's late spring in the Sonoran Desert, and the prickly pear cactus suddenly bloom. Inside their flowers is a bounty of sugary nectar and protein-rich pollen. What the bees collect will feed their young. What they spread pollinates the cactus. The pollen is stockpiled for each egg in the nest. There can be as many as nine. Cactus plant and cactus bee working in such harmony. How touching. This is a parasitic fly. Its similar appearance helps it blend in with the swarm. But it has evolved not to pollinate, but to eradicate. This miniature stealth bomber tries to lob its eggs into the bee's burrow. Its larvae would like nothing better than to eat the bee's children. To prevent this home invasion, cactus bees build turrets over their nests. The tiny bunkers make it difficult for the flies to make precision bombing raids. This mother returns with enough pollen to feed all of her young. Once finished, she seals the hole to keep them safe inside. In this race of life, many of the bees drop dead of exhaustion. Deep in the nest, the bee larvae grow and feed on the pollen. A few weeks later, they emerge, fully adult. The birthing ground erupts with new bees and new mating. The young mothers will carry their eggs until the next spring when the cactus once again bloom.